Hey guys, so Motorola announced the Moto X yesterday at the New York event and I wanted to make this video to check out some of the specs officially, check it out what it looks like and what kind of features it has and just kind of tell you my thoughts and what I think. So here it is right here, you can see it. It's hard to say what this phone really is, you know. I don't want to call it a mid-range device but it kind of is a mid-range device and it's a little bit complicated, I'll try and explain that a little bit later. It's a 4.7 inch screen but they really did pack this in so it feels great in the hand apparently and it just feels like a really premium smartphone which is nice to see. If we scroll down to some of the specs here, we can see what it has internally and it has a dual core Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro at 1.7 gigahertz. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing. It has this Motorola X8 system and the way this works is it basically has eight cores. So you've got two cores for the CPU, the S4 Pro, you've got four GPU cores in the Adreno 320 and then you've got the language processing core right here and the contextual processing core right here and this helps it power some of its uh, kind of standout features which I'll describe a little bit later. 4.7 inch AMOLED screen, only 720p resolution, no 1080p here. Two gigabytes of RAM, uh, Bluetooth 4.0 as you expect, 16 gigabytes and 32 gigabytes available, no micro SD card slot, Android 4.2.2, I guess the timings just didn't quite work out with Android 4.3, I'm sure it will get it at a certain point, we'll have to wait and see how fast it actually gets it. Battery life or the milliamp hours is 2200 milliamp hours, they said it lasts 24 hours with mixed usage, I'm finding that hard to believe, we'll have to wait and see what everyone says about it, but Pretty much no device lasts 24 hours, so yeah. Um, here's some of the dimensions. You can see it comes in at 130 grams, which pretty much weighs exactly the same as the Galaxy S4, even though the Galaxy S4 is a much larger device. So, you know, that just shows you that it is, it, it's not a light phone. It's quite a heavy phone that gives it a very premium feel. The camera, 10 megapixel clear camera with the uh, slightly larger pixels. They said it gives it 75% more light, so you're going to get better low light comparisons. And for me, this is where it gets a little bit disappointing. It's the price. Now, this is the on contract price right here. And you can see 199 for the 16 gigabyte version and 249 for the 32 gigabyte. I read somewhere that the off, the off contract price is going to be somewhere around $540 and $640 for the 32 gigabyte, which is a hell of a lot of money really for the kind of specs and the device you're getting, you know, you can get the HTC One and the Galaxy S4 for that sort of money that has a lot higher specs and a lot more features. Now, I was led to believe that this kind of high price was due to the fact that it's actually built and made in the USA. Motorola have all those kind of factories in the USA, which is great for the economy and how things should work, but it makes things more expensive and a lot of people really kind of don't care about that stuff, they just want the cheaper device. So it's not a cheap device by any means, even though it's slightly kind of mid-rangey, so take that into account. And another thing that really annoys me, it seems to be a US only thing right now, although I think Canada's getting it as well. All I know is it's not coming to the UK, so I can't get my hands on this even though I wanted to because there are some cool things about it. It's not coming to the UK, so that's kind of annoying. Another thing is it has interchangeable backs, and I just want to kind of make this clear. They're not user in interchangeable. You have to pick what you want from Motorola. You can see all the different types here, and then you have a 14-day return policy that you can send it back to them, and they'll change it. But basically, what you choose is what you get, and there's loads of different colors. You also saw the wooden one there, and this isn't kind of a fake wood or plastic that looks like wood. It's real wood, so we'll have to see how they treat this and how it kind of stays so it doesn't rot and all that stuff, but kind of nice. You've got a lot of design choice there. If we scro scroll down a bit, let's talk about the software. So it's basically running Android 4.2.2 pretty much stock as you can see from this image right here if we load it up. It looks pretty much stock. There's a few differences. Two of the main differences, I'm just going to grab my Nexus 4 just to kind of make this a little bit clearer. One of them is it's always listening to you and this is something that I actually really want on my Nexus 4. So say for example I was in my car and I said hello Google now navigate to Bedford or something, I wouldn't have to press any button, buttons, it would recognize my voice and it would just go ahead and do it all. So I'm going to put a link, not actually a link, I'm going to include the video in this video and you'll see that right at the end so stay tuned for that, there's a little kind of Motorola preview of what this feature is like and it actually looks pretty cool and these are what those two kind of cores, those extra cores are for. It uses those cores to control this always listening mode so it doesn't drain the battery. They're low powered cores so we'll have to wait and see how that works. It's also got kind of breathing lock screen where it kind of turns the lock screen on and off so you can see your notifications. Again that looked really cool. So there's two really really good software features that I kind of like the look of here. Um, 
I'd love to see them come or be ported to the Nexus devices or maybe be in Keyline Pi or something like that. Checking out some benchmarks, we can see here they've run the uh, GPU test. If we just check out the graphics score, 62.7 and 58.1, that is pretty damn good. I've got to say, it's going to be a good device for gaming. Let's not forget it has that 720p display, so it doesn't have to push 1080p. Nonetheless, those are good scores, benchmarks taken with a pinch of salt, but nonetheless, it's scoring pretty high. We can also see the uh, the G the another graphics benchmark but I lost my words there and again it performs pretty well like I said in terms of pure hardware and pure specs it's not the top of the line it's not going to beat out Snapdragon 800 and it kind of costs the same as one so that's kind of your decision right there and yeah that's pretty much the Moto X now yeah like I said I'm going to start that video so you can see what that features like there's quite a few different features they have this camera one where you kind of rotate the doorknob or something like that and it kind of quickly opens the camera just looks really weird to me but nonetheless that's what they've included so yeah here it is Motorola's back with the Moto X I don't think it's the phone everyone thought it was going to be and specifically that it's not growing worldwide it probably won't be but uh yeah let me know what you guys think and yeah enjoy the next cli clip I'm about to show you peace out okay Google now Note to self, buy more coffee. Saving note. Okay, Google now, wake me up in 20 minutes. Setting alarm. 